In this video, we provide the solution to question number 16 from practice exam number one for Math 1050. We have to graph the function f of x equals negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3. Uh, and there's some instructions that go along the way here. How are we going to graph this? First of all, we need to indicate all of the transformations that went upon y equals the absolute value of x, the standard absolute value, to get us to where we are here. And so that's my first recommendation. What are the transformations going on here? So notice we have this coefficient of negative 2 in front of the absolute value. The fact that it's negative means the absolute value is reflected across the x-axis. The fact we have a 2 there means it was vertically stretched by a factor of 2. So let's illustrate that. I, I, I might illustrate it, let's, let's, let's write it down. So we actually have a reflection reflection across the x-axis. So that's the first transformation. The second transformation is that it was vertically stretched. Vertically stretched by a factor by a factor of 2. All right. Uh, what does this negative 2 inside of the absolute value mean there? If we're inside the absolute value, because that's the, that was the original basic function, uh, then we're inside of the horizontal zone. Do, 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 do. And so x minus 2 inside the absolute value suggests there is a horizontal shift, but it's a shift in the positive direction. Um, and so we have, in fact, a shift right, a shift right by uh, 2, like there. Um, and then lastly, we have this plus 3. Notice it's outside of the horizontal zone. So this is a vertical transformation. Uh, so the plus 3 is, in fact, going to be a shift upward. Shift up by a factor of 3. In order to get full credit on this question, you must indicate all of these transformations, these four transformations uh, in play right there. Now, for our convenience, the graph of the absolute value is provided to us. This is our function f right here, because maybe we don't know it. That's OK, not a big deal. This question is asking about the transformations. Uh, and so now we want to graph it based upon these transformations. It also asks us to indicate three points on the graph. And so what I would suggest is start off with three points on the original graph. So we have the origin, 0, 0. We have the point, 1, 1. And we have the other point, uh, one, negative 1, 1, excuse me. So pay attention to what happens to these points as we transform them. Um, if you take the origin and you reflect it across the x-axis, that doesn't do anything to it. The y-coordinate becomes negative 0, which is still 0. Um, if you stretch it vertically by a factor of 2, um, that would stretch most y-coordinates, but 0 times 2 is still 0. So it didn't do anything to that as well. So any point on the x-axis is not affected by these vertical reflections and stretches. Um, if you move things to the right by 2, that does affect it. You're going to move over by 2, and then you shift it up by 3, like so. You see that the vertex of the absolute value moves over to this point right here. And do label it. We get the point 2, comma, negative, uh, 2, comma 3, like so. Um, let's look at some of these other points. Take 1, 1, for example. If we reflect it across the x-axis, that moves it down here, uh, moves it down here to be 1, negative 1. We're then going to stretch it vertically by a factor of 2. That means we're going to times its y-coordinate by 2. So that's going to move it over here to be 1, negative 2. We then have to move it 2 to the right. So that puts us here. And then we have to move it 3 up. 1, 2, and then 3, like so. In which case, then that gives us this point right here, which would be the point 3, comma 1, like so. Let's play this game one more time. Negative 1, 1, when we reflect across the x-axis, gives us this point here. Vertically stretching it by a factor of 2 gives us this point right here. We're at negative 1, negative 2. We move 2 to the right. We move 3 upwards. So we're actually at the point 1, 1 again, uh, but for a different reason. So we get 1, 1. And then the rest of the graph from these three points, its absolute value looks like a V. It should just look like the original graph, although there's some distortion that's happened because of the reflection and, and, and stretching there. So if you have a straight edge, use it. If not, not a big deal. Uh, connect the dots right here. We get that. Connect the dots right there, like so. And so in the graph, uh, we get this red graph is an F. I think I labeled earlier the blue graph as F. That's not true, sorry. This, the, the blue graph was the absolute value of X. 
uh, which, which was given below. We now have the graph of F here on the screen. Uh, it's a good practice to draw little arrows at the end to suggest that the function does extend beyond. It's not a finite domain. It goes on and on and on and on. Uh, but that's what we need to do to get full credit on this question. We need to list our transformations. We need to have a correct graph that utilize those transformations. And we do need to indicate at least three points on the graph. Uh, so we can see very quickly, um, assuming we have a hard time drawing pictures, uh, we need the, the points to help us indicate what exactly it was we were trying to graph.